Well, thank you for joining us online today from this snowy, uh, all the winter wonderland that we have going on out there. Thank you so much for being flexible and patient with us today as we try and navigate all of this stuff. We are going to get started today with announcements. Um, this Wednesday, we have our CR one year anniversary. This is going to be a huge event for our CR. We're going to have food and it's going to be a lot of great, great stuff going on around here on Wednesday. That's going to start at 7 p.m. We're going to hear from testimonies from our TLC CR family. Also, we are getting ready to enter in into our 21 days of prayer and fasting. That actually starts today. So that's going to be exciting. I can't wait to see what God is going to do. Now, the next three Monday nights, we are going to have prayer. We are going to have prayer right here at the church, and we are going to have communion on the 18th. On the 18th is going to be a special time of sacrifice and remembering what the Lord has done for us and what he is going to do. So you are not going to want to miss that. We have a lot going on around here. And that is because you give so generously. Thank you so much. And while we're not here in person this morning, we still have the opportunity and the options to give through our new online giving platform. If you haven't downloaded the app, you can go to the App Store and download that. Or you can text to give. And you can text 84321. And then you can go to tlcjoshua.com. So we have plenty of options for you to give and to support all of the great things that are going on around TLC. And before we pray over the offering, we're going to bring a few names before the Lord today as well. Let's remember to pray for Marion Jenkins. She is sick this morning. Again, uh, let's pray for Debbie Barnes, his brother. His name is Douglas. Let's lift him up in prayer. Carl Finch, Gary Falk, Pastor Tim Crosno is also sick. And let's remember the Coonrod family. Linda Richardson and those who are still recovering from COVID. If we can, why don't we just, right where you're sitting, right in your living room, let's just lift up our hands, lift up your voice right now. Let's take these needs before the Lord today. God, Lord, we know it's a little different, Lord, but we're, we're learning to operate in the different, Lord, because that's where you flourish. God, and right now we pray that you touch every need. Lord, that was lifted up before you in faith. God, we know that you can minister and move right now in Jesus' name. God, there is no sickness, no disease that you can't take care of. Lord, and we pray right now that you minister, God, to those who are struggling. Lord, to those who are hurting right now in the name of Jesus. God, and we pray for this service today. Lord, we pray that your spirit flows into every living room. God, into every, through every TV, through every phone, through every computer. However people are watching today, God, your anointing will flow through them right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that you bless every giver today. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. God, our expectations are high today. Lord, this isn't just a throwaway service. God, we're here to worship you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Come on, why right where you're sitting? Why don't you worship with us today?
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't we lift him up right now? Why don't we lift him up right now? Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus, we need you to do what you're famous for, God. We need you to show up, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, true worship. Incredible, incredible. Actually, I'm going to make a few comments, and I'm going to call you guys back up, and we're going to do that one more time before we're done today. TLC family, thank you for joining us online on this snowy Sunday morning. And... I'm going to hold my message that I was going to preach this week, but there were some things that I was going to wrap up with, and I'm going to talk to you just for a couple of moments this morning about the events of the week and where we are. Let's pray together this morning. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your power and your presence that we feel in this place today. I thank you, God, that you are visiting each person that is watching this. And I know that you're drawing close to them, God. And as they praise and they worship, I know that they're feeling your spirit. I pray right now, God, that you would guide every word that I'm about to speak and open every heart, every mind, and every soul to receive. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. And y'all may be seated, the few of you that are here. And uh, wow, what a different Sunday it is, but I tell you what, COVID got us ready for the unusual and the unexpected. If COVID did anything, those eight weeks we were shut down, uh, it helped us to kind of adjust and understand that sometimes it may feel or look a little different in the sanctuary, but uh, we're able to reach out and minister to those watching uh, online and being blessed by our online stream this morning. So, Uh, Again, we are in our action series. Our theme for the year is action. And we started that last week. I'll be continuing that next week. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of comments this morning. I made a couple of comments Wednesday night. um, And I continue to watch the news, continue to pray. And uh, and I just want to make a few comments uh, about news events of the week. Talk about our fasting and then we'll wrap back up with a, uh, a song, and uh, we know that the Lord will, will bless you this week. I do want to remind you tomorrow night, we do believe that the winter weather will be gone. Uh, I'm sure that uh, it will not stick around, it will not survive the temperatures tomorrow. So we are beginning our 21 days of fasting. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but I'll remind you at the end uh, here that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, coming together for family prayer the next three Monday nights. Uh, Next Monday night, the 18th, will be communion. Uh, And so anyway, it's going to be a great, great season of fasting and prayer. Well, church, let me talk to you about what occurred in our country this week. If you watch the news any at all, uh, you saw the events that occurred at the Capitol um, on Wednesday. And I, I want to convey my heart to you this morning and, and tell you that if we place our trust in any world system, in any country, any societal system, whether that's a religious system, whether that's a financial system, or yes, even a political system, any system that is built by man, we will be disappointed. We will be disappointed. The events that occurred at the Capitol this week is yet another reason that I urge the church to stay at a distance when it comes to politics. And what concerns me more really than anything is the rhetoric that we have seen in the days since what occurred. Now we saw some, let's just call it what it is, what we saw on Wednesday by a group of people, was lawlessness. 
It was a criminal act. They were trespassing. They were going places they were not legally allowed to go and do. Well, we saw that last spring and last summer as well. Okay, We saw people burning down cities. We saw people looting things. We saw people tearing things up. We saw a mob mentality take over in multiple cities of our country. And now we saw that again this week. When we saw what happening a few months ago, most of the news outlet told us, well, this is, this is called for protest. This is justified reaction. Uh, many, thankfully, after several weeks came and condemned it, right? But what did we see this week? We saw three hours, essentially, three, maybe four hours, a few hours of this activity and in the days following, we have heard terms like insurrection, political cue, uh, a cue, um, a, a coup, and so, and, and sedition, and we have overthrow, and, and, and all these words, the, the rhetoric, the response from the news outlet, the response from the politicians has escalated. If you have not noticed, if you've not seen this news headline, it looks like Facebook and Twitter and some other social media sites have banned President Trump. Now, that's their right. They're a private company. Okay? But all of these things line up and, and hopefully urge us as a church to realize that the end of the age is drawing closer. We talked about this last March. I've been urging you since the beginning of this pandemic that we are beginning the end of days, if you will. And Matthew 24 tells us that, that things are going to continue to get worse for the world and the church needs to focus our attention on things that have eternal impacts. That's where we need to focus. That's where we need to make sure we're spending the most of our time because, you see, through all the chaos that is ensuing and will continue to ensue, the church's days are getting brighter and brighter and better and better. Revival is here. Rev people, hearts and minds are being stirred. People are being shaken, and we've got to be in a position to reach out. We've got to be in a position to love. We've got to be in a position to understand that God is using this society. God is using the culture. God is using things that are occurring to stir hearts and minds and change people's eternity. Amen. we got to realize that, yes, we are at the end of things, and yes, things are getting worse for the world, but the church cannot have a knee-jerk reaction. The church cannot go into panic mode each time there is a crisis in our country. Because newsflash, for the world, there will continue to be crisis in this country. For the church, we, are, we have some incredible days ahead. Now, absolutely incredible days. But we must realize, and this is what you need to hear me, we've got to realize that we understand and grasp the signs of the time. You see, as these signs continue in the world around us, we need to ensure that our salvation is secure. If you're watching this this morning and you're uncertain about your eternity, I'm not sure what you're waiting on to make that right. I'm not sure what you're waiting on to make your calling and election sure. I'm not sure what you're waiting on to say, let me get myself right with God. Let me repent of my sins. Let me be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and let me be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now is the time. The signs are showing us that now is the time to get ready. If you've got loved ones that are not ready to meet God, now is the time to pester them. Well, I don't want to beat them over the head with a Bible. I don't, want to, I don't want to preach to them constantly. Well, now is a good time to push a little bit harder than you've ever pushed. Now is a good time to start maybe what you've never had that conversation with them before. Considering that we understand the signs of the time which we are living, I feel certain that I could mention the news the headlines, the current event, events going on a few times a month, if not every week that I stood behind this podium. I will not do that, but I feel certain that I could. I believe that's how fast we are going to see things unravel for this world and how incredible things are going to be happening for the church. But what I will do is I will talk about events that are going on in our culture, in our society, the country's position or posture, if you will, 
And when I talk about these things in the days, weeks, and months to come, please do not be so naive to think that I'm talking purely about political status or political position or political players in the world today. No, you have to understand, I'm going to be talking about the facts of the situation in the world around us and how they line up with the Word of God. How these things go hand in hand. When I bring these things to your attention, it's not just because I didn't have a message and I wanted to, to grab something off the headlines. No, I wanted us to understand that what we see in the news and what we see in the Word of God are aligning like they never have before. I'll be talking about the relationship of a current events, decisions that are getting made daily, weekly, and monthly, and the impact on the church. And I'm going to do this so that we're not like the crowd that we read about in Luke chapter 12. This crowd we find Jesus Christ rebukes in Luke 12, verse 56. Jesus says, you fools, you know how to interpret the weather signs of the earth and sky, but you don't know how to interpret the present times. Now, he was referring to his first coming, but this is very applicable to his second coming as well. You see, we're really good at understanding, well, there's an 80% chance of snow today, and boy, they, they got that one right. right? We understand that when, when this, this pressure system moves in and, and the temperature drops, and this is what's going to happen. It's going to be a, a sunshiny day, or it's going to be a, a cold, snowy day like it is today. We understand how to predict the weather. We understand what the signs of the weather are telling us. But as the church, as born-again believers, we must ensure we are interpreting the signs and the events of the present time correctly. Why is that? So we can take proper action. So we can respond correctly for the times that we are living in. One of the ways to respond correctly is always to fast and to pray. To fast and to pray. You see, the purpose of fasting is not to twist God's arm into submitting to our will. We're entering into a season, three weeks, 21 days of, of prayer and fasting today. And its purpose is not to boast about our holiness. It's not to brag about how righteous we are and how, how, how much more spiritual we are than other people. If that's what you think your, your fasting is about, then you've gotten it wrong. You see, the purpose of fasting is to bring our flesh in submission to God's will. The reason that we fast is to sacrifice our fleshly desires so that we can draw closer to God, so we can realign our perspective and see things the way God wants us to see them. You see, we fast so that we can change the way that we act in an ungodly world. And we fast and we stay away from certain things so that the voices of society will be silenced in our soul and we could hear the calling of the Holy Spirit. And we can hear the voice of God tell us, this is what I need you to do. This is where I need you to go. This is what I need you to say. You see, again, our theme for this year is action. And many people are asking the question right now, Pastor, what should we do as a nation? What should we do as a church? What should we do as a body of believers? What do we do now? How do we act? How do we respond to what is going on? And that's where fasting comes in. We're not doing this to simply abstain from something. We shouldn't, we shouldn't sit back and go, well, pastor said this was 21 days of, of, of fasting and prayer, so let me mark my calendar down. It's, it's day 20, it's day 19, it's day 18, till I can get back to my normal diet, till I can get back to the things that, that I normally would do. But rather, let's take these three weeks and let's focus and say, God, how do you want me to think differently? God, how do you want me to react or respond differently? How do you want me to change my action? You see, this fasting will also bring about spiritual authority and spiritual power. Oh yeah, Mark chapter 9 verse 29 specifically tells us this. This is a story of the disciples and they were not able to cast out a certain demon uh, out of a child and they, and they bring this person to God and they say it to Jesus and they say, listen, we couldn't cast out this demon. What is going on? 
And he replied to them, verse 29 of Mark chapter 9, he replied to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. You see, in this day, in this hour, we need all the spiritual power, all the spiritual authority that we can get. That's the reason that we live a certain way here at True Life Church. That's the reason that we ask our leaders and those that are in certain positions of this church, I want them to have spiritual power and authority, and they make lifestyle decisions and fast or consecrate and dedicate certain things to God. They stay away and abstain for these things so that God will anoint them with certain spiritual power and authority. But for the next three weeks, you can experience that. If you'll, if you'll crucify this flesh and say, God, I'm going to stay away from this food. I'm going to stay away from this activity. I'm going to stay away from these things so that I can hear your voice. I can crucify my flesh so that I can experience the authority, the power that only comes from prayer and fasting. You see, don't just take something away from your routine, but rather replace it with the things of God. Replace it with things that we would, we would usually ignore. We may forget because of all the distraction that goes on in our world. We're setting those distractions aside for 21 days. And we're saying, God, let me hear your voice. God, let me, let me feel your heartbeat. Come on back, true worship. I'm going to wrap up talking about the details of our fast. Now I want us to go back into this song and I want us as a church, watching right where you are from home, to make this song our prayer that God, in the next 21 days, we want you to show up and do what you're famous for. This first coming week, we, we understand my heart as a pastor. I want this fast, I want this fast to unify us as a church. One of the last times that we fasted, I had people tell me, well, pastor, after the first week, that was all I could do. And after, the, you know, midway through the second week, I was out, I was done. And, and so we, we tried to shape this thing in a way that we would bring unity in the church and we could all bind together and do this together. So the 11th through the 15th, the first work week, we'll look to do the Jewish fast. Essentially, that's liquids only from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Next week, the 18th through the 22nd, will be the Daniel fast. And that's essentially no meats, no sweets, and no dairy. And then the third week is favorites and media fast. It's where you're giving up your favorite food, your favorite activities, and giving up all secular media for the 25th through the 29th. And devote that time that you would spend on secular media, on, on TV, on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever. Spend that time taking in something from God in prayer, reading, studying. You could also do a liquids only fast if you've watched this and you've listened and you said, well, I want to do more than that, Pastor. Well, okay. Well, do 21 days of, of liquid fast. That's okay. You can do that. Uh, exercise caution if you're doing that, if you want to tackle that. Uh, Maybe if you want to do that on the weekends, since we're not covering weekends. If you want to do a liquids fast on the weekends, do that. If you want to substitute one of the other fasts and say, well, I want to do more. Well, do a liquids only fast and substitute one of these other ones. But remember, if you have a day where you just can't get through the fast and you kind of fall off the wagon, if you will, don't beat yourself up. Just simply start again the next day. Reconsecrate, rededicate, recommit. Remember, the goal of this time together is not to see who can endure the most heartache, but rather unite us together as a church family in a time of crucifying the flesh, hearing the voice of God, and letting God instruct us of our plan of action for 2021. We want everybody to be able to participate in some way, so choose the fast that's best for you. Choose the fast that you're going to be able to stick with for three weeks. Choose the fast that you can commit to and say, God, I can do this with my church family for the next 21 days. I can do this for the next three weeks. We can come together and I can draw closer to you. I can tune out this world. In the middle of all the chaos, I can draw closer. So why don't we together right now, Father, I thank you for your word. 
I thank you for your power and I thank you for your presence. And I'm asking you right now, God, to honor this time of dedication, this time of consecration. Honor this time together, uniting together to seek your voice, to seek your face. And we're asking, God, like never before, we need you like never before to show up and to do what you are famous for. We need you to show up, God, and show out. We need you to show up and direct and lead and guide. We pray right now, God, do what you're famous for.